Welcome and happy modding to you. Thank you for joining. And today on the first stream of August, actually the 26th, I started keeping uh, keeping count now. Uh, as always, just rocking some chill music. Hey, Gonzo. All right. Glad you're here, my man. Have a good day. Sound check is good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I figure I got it down by now, but it's always good to just leave it on there because the day I take it off is going to be the day that I'm like talking into nothing for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah, so moving on uh, for today, and a lovely day it is. Um, for the non-Morrowin thing today, yes, that's right, I'm still doing it. I wanted to look at Wargus, which if you're not familiar, I actually have a real website that's not GitHub. Um it's basically an engine replacement for the old Warcraft 1 and 2 games, if you're a fan of those. Uh, I would love to see one for Warcraft 3. Maybe if that exists, let me know, and I just don't know about it. But uh, yeah, Wargus, you can play uh, Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, and I think there's even, yeah, here, uh, slight enhancements towards StarCraft. I think you can actually play StarCraft with uh, a, one of their builds. Um, I haven't messed with that, to tell you the truth. But uh, yeah, if, yeah uh, if you're into that kind of a thing, those classic RTS games, yeah, Stargus, here we go. Um, and yeah, Strategus kind of, Orgus kind of being like the engine, right? And then um, with game implementations, not unlike OpenMW in a sense. Wow, okay, so maybe I need to... Neat, very neat. Maybe it's time to try Stargus, I don't know. Uh, I guess Blizzard gives those files away for free now, too, even, so... Cool. Neat. I like it. Um, and yeah, so uh, Summer Mod Jam, over, and um, judging is finished, and I just want to say, you know, thank you to Danae for having me be a judge, and thank you to all the modders. It was just really awesome to look at everything and dive in and... Um, just see what was created and really, really enjoy it all. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to uh, seeing updates to all the beautiful stuff that was there and, and more from everybody else. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do the normal uh, first half of the uh, stream. In the first hour, we're gonna look at various issues that popped up. We're gonna work a little bit on the CFG generator. I think we might just jump right into that and get you know our hands into some Python. Um, and then, uh, you know, the second hour, we'll go ahead with the uh, the issue roundup. And uh, I did actually take some time to review. Uh, Herdrax was so kind to open up an issue. Um, sort of talking about the various options that we have for bodies and heads and stuff like that right now. Um, and what is the best selection going forward for the various things that we're adding and so I took a look at that um and we'll get there later on so and then as always we will um you know put any changes out there uh the ongoing 5.10 thing is you know still rolling um big props to Gonzo thank you uh so much and Hudrex both of you helping me you know make extreme progress on the data uh conversion so we're moving plugins data pa uh data folders um, usage notes, all those things, new data format, but it's all like, you know, as Herdrax put it, very mechanical work, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're looking like we're in a really good spot, though. Uh, plugins are effectively done, and um, usage notes are a huge chunk of the way done, and as are data paths, which I've been chunking on myself. So, uh, yeah. All right, well, so for the issues review... Um, Filing out all the data names. Yeah, you got it, man. <laughs> Thankfully, um, so one of the things I've actually been bumping into is that, so like data name was a fun typo that Gonzo made in the YAML. Um, and the it was easy to fix though, because like the error that we got, what you're seeing here is an error, but it's a different one. The error that we got w was sensible. I was able to look at it and be like, boom, okay, that's the problem. I'll just fix that. But when we're dealing with the Tomil formatted data, which I will admit, let's take a look at that. I will admit I was somewhat excited to um, 
have it in this format because it worked really well for the mod list. So, for example, uh, total overhaul mod list exists as such, right? Pretty, you know, easy to follow, right? All the sub lists, you might recognize these if you ever looked at the mod list. This is how it exists as data. Nothing crazy, right? Looks pretty good. You can maybe get a feel for why I was like, oh, this will work for usage notes. But <clears throat> the usage notes have interesting content. We're plopping HTML in there. Raw HTML is going in there. And you can see right here, and this is just my editor. The the Tomal mode for my editor is just, it doesn't understand, for example, like we have a break in the... This should be green too, like the whole rest of the string. But it's seeing one code quote and treating it as a break in the triple quote. Um, and it's so, what I'm getting at here is that things that read Toml appear to be even more varied and wild in their differences in behavior than YAML. We got a sensible error when you broke that thing with a typo. I, we fixed it like that, it was no big deal. When errors are coming up in the Toml, I get something. <laughs> Gonzo says, uh-oh, we don't need escape characters, do we? Well, <laughs> so uh, as I was preparing for the stream, I'm like, okay, you know, Herdrex did a ton of work on the usage notes, but the uh, the CI pipeline failed. And so that's an indicator that there's a problem, right? And so I'm looking in here and I'm like, huh, okay, what the heck does that mean, right? Key name H, huh? We don't have a key name H. Okay, so right away I'm a little confused. The error, right away we're in a situation where this is, less ideal than using YAML. Now, I'm not saying I want to use YAML for this because I think typing y this stuff into YAML would be just a headache. But in any case, the long and short of it is the errors I'm getting from the Toml decoder here, I guess the one that's built into Python now in 3.11, um, <laughs> it's not so great. Invalid character and key name. So it appears maybe I need to consult the Toml. So, so answer your question, Gonzo, do we need escape characters? I think I need to consult the Toml documentation um, for multi-line strings because we're obviously violating some convention here. My editor highlighting is a clue. The breakage here is a clue, perhaps. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to have to... Um, let's go ahead and just comment this out so we can actually get some stuff done today. Uh, we're going to comment that out. Error's going to go away and uh, we can get on with the stuff that we want to look at. But yeah, later on, it's definitely something I got to look at and we're going to have to make sure we, you know, I think Toml is the right choice for this format. Um, but yeah, we're going to be throwing, you know, H raw HTML in there, cleaning output, just whatever. I mean, we shouldn't have to think too hard about what we're putting in there. Um, it's a little disappointing. Uh, but again, it could be completely on me for not properly reading the spec right. Um, so, you know, I'll do that later, and hopefully it'll be fixed. Let's actually get my, uh... Oh. I just heard a thud. Hmm. One sec. No problem. <laughs> what is that sound? All right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Emacs. Actually, you go ahead and stop. Yeah, there you go. We'll do it here. All right, great. So let's go ahead and take a look, then. I'll close this, and as I said, we'll... I will take a look at that later, and, you know, we're going to have to... It's a big bummer for those, you know, uh, I think... Gonzo, you and Hudrex are both using the GitLab editor, which is neat. You know, I fired it up just to kind of get a sense of what you guys are doing. And um, it's definitely neat, right? Let's take a look at it here. Open in Web IDE. Um, and, it, you know, you don't need to have an editor or anything. I don't know if this is like Atom or VS Code or something. It kind of looks like VS Code, though, doesn't it? Um, but, yeah, I wonder if this is just not giving good enough like, holy moly, it opened up the diff. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if we're just not getting good enough um, visual feedback here. You know, it is, This is VS Code. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, 
this is there's no highlighting here whatsoever so if you make a mistake you're just relying on seeing it and you know Tamil is not a format really meant for humans to read despite deceptively looking sort of like it could be yeah, yeah, Gonzo says, yeah, I went back to Notepad++ because the lack of highlighting, I think a sensible approach is you can still use this, right? But, like, maybe copy it out into Notepad++, you know, edit there, and then copy it back into the form. Um, yeah, Notepad++ does it out of the box. I don't know. Yeah, this certainly, Tomel is not, like, some obscure format or anything, right? Like, I'm a little surprised. Um, there are issues with that I've seen here and there, though, with... Um, GitLab formatting, for example, and not to go too much off the deep end here, but if you look in the website code repository in the root of the repo, we have a Docker file. Pretty cool, huh? If it ever loads. And look, yeah, you'll note that it's um syntax highlighted, right? All the stages got the right color and whatever. He even gave me color for the number. That's cool. But if I click on my Docker file dot tests, suddenly GitLab has no idea what it is. There's no highlighting or anything like that. Um, the point of showing you that was to say, well, it's not impossible to break their highlighting, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe this is like too big of a file or something. I'm a little scared to open a bug on the GitLab tracker, which is like five digits deep. <laughs> if we thought being under 100 was a big deal, Gonzo, the GitLab issue tracker for like GitLab itself is like, pfft. so I don't know. Maybe we'll go there. Maybe there's already a bug filed and they're working on it. Uh, yeah, check it out. <laughs> Gonzo says, that's nuts. Yes. <laughs> no wonder the UI is the way it is. <clears throat> no offense to the GitLab folks. Again, mad respect to the people. They are gracious to my project. They give me a free ultimate plan, as do they give OpenMW and lots of other open source projects. I respect and love them. But yeah, uh, the UI is, is, you know, it's not my favorite. This is really cool. Hey, Section 8. Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. We're just talking about GitLab and how they have embedded VS Code into their website. We're just looking at it right now. But on a, weirdly, they don't color highlight Tomel. You would think, right, Tomel. Um, so anyway, we're just kind of musing about that. And uh, this is how uh, folks have been, you know, editing the MR, which is great, but also slightly annoying that we're not getting any color highlighting. Um, so, yeah. And uh, we'll get into this one momentarily. 6.x body is, and heads. Uh huh. Yeah, I thought it was five. <laughs> it's bordering on six digits. Gonzo says, yeah, wow. 92,400 issues on the GitLab FOSS repo. 3,200 MRs. Yeah, and keep in mind, they're a, you know, a for profit company too. So, like, they're managing all of that while driving their business and building a product that people use, you know. Um, pretty crazy i can't imagine <laughs> i imagine if like in a weird universe people were paying me for the website and i was doing the open source thing wild <laughs> section eight i didn't realize it was possible to have that many issues yeah it's pretty wild right um i feel like if linux kernel took pull requests they would probably have a amazing amount of issues they do have some issues on the torvalds linux repo but it's just people who don't read all right, so let's go on to an actual issue that we could look at. Um, I saw that there was an update from our, our friend Andre here. Some plants levitate in Balmora. Hmm, okay, wow, this is a... This is a pretty nice picture here. Probably a minor incompatibility, incompatibility with BCOM. I forget where I saw this, but some time ago, I seem to recall MD saying um, he wants to know about these things, and he uh, incom specifically by these things, I mean incompatibilities with BCOM like this. We're going to hop in there and take a look at that. Um, that he will just delete them or whatever. Yeah, we found three floaters and sages more. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> there's a couple of things I feel like we should reach out to MD about. Um, this being some of them, but let's like confirm that they're legit just from... You know, uh, yeah, yeah, if it's just from this mod or maybe like a combination of stuff we're using. So, um, oh, ah, Section 8 says, oh, hey, Johnny, I got distracted from the thing. Thought you might think this is cool. Hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's check that out. 
Oh, nice. Wow, cool. Awesome. Yeah, so this is the thing Section 8 and I were talking about on Discord. Uh, some Warhammer-inspired stuff. Servo skulls. Looks pretty cool, though. Um, the, the model you had showed me before. Pretty cool. Starwind multiplayer. Anybody down? Uh, and then there was that block destruction thing you showed me, too. That was pretty interesting, right? Like, we can just break Vivek City, for example, maybe. Break the game, literally. <laughs> it's kind of unironically fun. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of fun, I think, most of the time. <laughs> All right. That's nice. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, we're going to have a multiplayer stream, and we're going to get in on all that, and it'll be fun. Will we play Starwind? Will we play Morrowind? Will we play Robowind? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, and then there's Vidiaquim's scheduling script, which I finally actually got to look at, and it was pretty crazy. Um, I feel like anybody who works on uh, 2090 Robowind multiplayer, yeah. <laughs> I feel like anybody, though, who works on a... Open MW Lua or even an MWSE Lua and PC schedules mod, they could share data with Vidi's efforts. Um, because it looks like the data is nicely decoupled from the functionality of it. Anyway, so that's something like nice, very nice. And we'll get into multiplayer land eventually. So, yeah, going back to this though. Um, and so, actually, to kind of test, like, is this um, total overhaul or what? I'm going to actually fire it up with expanded vanilla. Um, oh my. First, let's let's fix this. You see this? I'm constantly fighting with things like this. Python, I love to hate you. I hate to love you. Uh, okay. There we go. I have git stashed. Disabling the test in question. Um... Eventually, we're going to need to figure out how to please black. That is the format checker for Python that I use. Um, you know, I'm just calling it normally right here. The problem being, though, that my computer uses a newer version of black than um, what runs on the GitLab CI. Uh, and maybe we can solve that by using, like, an Arch Linux Docker image instead. You know, maybe I should just do that. Hmm, that didn't occur to me until just now, but it seems like the easy solution. Excuse me. CI need not be the same OS that runs the server. Oh, nice. Gonzo, excellent. He says, yeah, it looks like the quotation marks and backslashes must be escaped in Tamil according to this thing I'm reading. Uh, I was a little worried about that. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll look at that maybe in a moment. Thank you for getting into that. Um, that's illuminating, to say the least. And a little annoying. Up until now, I, my interactions with Tamil have been pretty good, but I've never tried to, like, throw HTML into a multi-line Tamil string. Maybe it's me that's bad for doing that. <laughs> yeah, my, my thoughts exactly. Gonzo says, okay. Yeah, so, you know, I think you and I were talking a few weeks ago privately, actually, about, like, serialized formats, and they're very, we were complaining about YAML, actually, right? And I said, oh, don't worry, Tamil. And then here we are, hating Tamil, too. So, there you go. <laughs> All right. So, I guess that means for this thing, I'm not going to undo it now, but... Because it's in the middle of crunching indentation or Tamil escape characters you can't win yeah exactly pick the thing that is gonna annoy you um I do think in this case so okay I still think that Tamil is what we want to use but if we went the route of YAML we would have to rely on being able to like properly because all the multi-line strings will have to be indented you know by some factor of two so Maybe you got an editor like VS Code or Notepad++ that you can just highlight everything and hit tab and it'll do the right thing. You know, I believe Emacs will do that for me, for example. Um, that would be the happy path, but obviously I don't think it's quite that simple, right? I thought Tamil was going to be simple and it's not. So, all right, here we go. Usage notes. Boom, it wins. Let's open it up. Oh, 
Oh yeah, test still crunching. Cool. Okay, well. I think we can this data is not going to be read. So, the question is Because when this is uncommented, it actually complains about uh, this one. Let me, uh... Oh, yes, the war chant in Nerevar Rising. It's my favorite part of it. I know this is a great interpretation of it, for sure. But it's just... <laughs> it's an interpretation, for sure. Yeah, it doesn't like the angle bracket, I guess? I don't know. Check it. Gonna cancel that. It's gonna blow up again, and it's gonna point to the angle bracket. And I'm just wondering, like, so do we have to? Do we have to escape every angle bracket? That would be serious. Does it like try to interpret math inside of a string? That would be really. I hope that's not the case. Kind of wouldn't surprise me though. <laughs> All right. Mod list always the biggest one. Oh my. Okay. Any Unicode character may be escaped with some forms that you don't want to type. Okay. These are technically, hopefully, not Unicode characters, but maybe they have ended up being so. Maybe I can just. Huh. Thank you for the research, Gonzo. Appreciate that. <sighs> Obviously, I didn't read the manual. Anyhow, once this is done crunching, we'll hop into, uh, I'm going to fire up Expanded Vanilla. And I'm going to hop to this very, this is a nice picture, by the way. This is really helpful to help me see exactly where it is. Because it, it, it could be tough, uh, Gonzo. I believe you recall looking for the other scene that our friend Andre here reported from Rise of the Tribe Unmourned. And it's kind of like, wait, where is it? Where is it? You don't even see it at all until poof, it's right there. And then how can you miss it? Yeah, how so yeah, that took a minute. Yep, me too, man. So yeah, oh no, 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 no. So it's the uh, this one. Interesting. Okay, so column three, though. That's not right. Line 151, column three. One fifty one. Yeah, like wait, wait a minute. It's just wrong. That's wrong because yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> the line that's bad is 130. But the decoder is just pointing to some other line that's the wrong line. This is what I'm talking about. You know, the Tamil decoder is just nowhere near the quality of the YAML one. Um, it can't tell us where that, uh, you know. <sighs> I have an idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if there isn't a built-in Toml for Python, because we're using it looks like a third-party package. So maybe that's the issue. Um, yeah. Hmm. So is there a built... I guess... Before I go nuking it. Uh, let's see. Tom Lib. Uh-huh. Okay. So this is problematic because this server does not use Python 3.11. And I cannot just do that. So yeah, I don't know. It's not quite as simple as just use this one. <clears throat> this is appealing because it's officially part of Python. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I mean, PyYaml is a third-party library. It's just a really good one, I guess. All right. Well, nuts. All right, enough of that. Let's go look at this, shall we? 
Mm, here we go. Added Mango HUD uh, to my run script, which is going to give me a little FPS indicator so we can all see how much of a potato I got for now. Mm, okay, here we go. Let's take a look. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, it only ends up being pretty potato-like on the stream. I swear, when I'm not also streaming, this thing runs pretty good. I can run total overhaul with six cells view distance at like 20 to 30 FPS, depending on the scene. You know, like, better than it reasonably should. Bro, WTF these load screens. Section 8, you dig? <laughs> oh yeah so there's this thing new thing i think i figured out why uh, on a previous stream i mentioned my game kind of uh <laughs> dig all the way to china yeah excellent uh, props to gonzo those are gonzo's uh, splash screens so yeah but yeah you just see there that popped up on the screen there cell reference dark not found so what's happening is uh the open mw lua script that removes the negative lighting it, some change happened recently. I don't know what I didn't find it out yet, but some change happened recently that um, makes that mod take forever. And maybe it's just the approach that it does. You know, maybe it needs to use a different engine handler or something. Um, we got to bring it up in Discord in the Lua channel and uh, let the author know something happened. Yeah, weather. Of course, it's raining. Gosh, if I had a whoa, -ho. there we go. Okay, so let's try and find. Where we gotta go. All right, and if we, so it looks like the north wall of the town. All right. Let me slow down just a little bit. There we go. Oh, here we wait. You know, can I just get some sunshine, please? Please. Wow, seven FPS. That's oof. Huh. Stream chat overlay. Bring my gaming PC. Over here. I owe you all that. <laughs> I can't really tell, though, if this is actually floating or not. Um, oh, it is. Look at that. It is. So with this one, it might be possible. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, with this one, you can go into OpenMWCS and it's either H or G. You can highlight it, hit the key, and that'll plop it down to the terrain collision. Um, easy fix. We don't have to delete it. This one isn't, like, horribly clipping into anything. Um, but there it is. So, yeah, thank you for checking that, Gonzo. Um, we're going to go ahead and close the potato machine here. That's a confirmed thing for sure. Um, looks like he pointed at a few things, though. Oh, okay. Well, I better... Uh, are you familiar with just drop it? Section 8 says. Gives him an idea. I'm thinking of perfect placement. No. Is this an uh, MWSE mod? Please enlighten me. Please. Uh, shoot. Well, I got to go back in and take another look. Okay. It's uh, cool. Uh, please share a link, my man. Um, let's take a look at it. I have MWSE locally now, actually. So we can look at cool stuff. For inspiration, if we want. Ooh, per I love that. Okay, yeah. So kind of like perfect placement. Um, then in spirit, it sounds like right here. Uh, section eight says basically it places stuff you drop at the correct position orientation. If you've played Morrowind, maybe you've no noted like books awkwardly like position and stuff like that. 
pretty this sounds pretty cool if you ask me this is one i thought we can't do because of scene graft bounding box mm -hmm. uh, that was me quoting section eight by the way and uh, you know what i'm gonna actually wait to open that link until we because my potato just uh, and you'll note the big old towers back there the uh compatible odai river extremely nice okay so let's I'm going to come right back to that section 8. Hold that thought, please. Okay, so this is all on the, that little corner. Oh, yeah, okay. This little bunch over here. I see. Okay. Let's get over here. Oh, yeah, I can tell this one's floating from here. Oh, my. <laughs> this would be another one I feel like, yeah, it would be like a, just a, thunk, you know, fix it. Counted two floaters. Nice. All right, Gonzo. Appreciate that buddy check there. Excuse me. Hmm. Well, these things happen. Uh, many thanks to Andre for the report there. Appreciate that. This one looks good. It's coming out of the rock, but I think that's fine probably. I don't know. Yeah, this one you could almost move over just a smidge. Get it out of the rock, maybe. Oop. But that is clearly a floater. And then if we just go through the wall here. This one floating just slightly, so... See, I'm almost getting 20 FPS if I look away from the busy place. <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, great. Thank you to all. And I guess, uh, <clears throat> you know, this isn't really a problem specific to the project necessarily, but it's good that we collect this information here, you know, and then we can kind of forward it to those who need to know, so... Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Gonzo. Did a quick fly around. Those are the only ones I could find, he said. Very good. We'll go ahead and assign that one. We're going to... We'll go ahead and respond to Andre later on. Um, kind of decide how we're going to do this. Because um, I think there's a few things, right? In particular for MD, you know, I uh, want to share the Lightning Rods Lewis script. Um, and, you know, again, he potentially wants to know about these. This is not a mod list or website specific problem, really. It's, I think, with BCOM. So I think for due diligence, what we'll need to do is run just BCOM and saplings. Does it happen with those two? We'll want to emulate the BCOM setup with the waterworks and everything. Um, does it still happen? And then we'll note, uh, we'll make sure to mention to Andre that the plugin being dirty. Not an issue because actually it's just um, junk cells, I think, is what it has. So, no evil GMSTs. Um, we don't got to worry about it anymore. Thank you, Ben Winger. So, all right. Yeah, let's take a quick look at this now. Thank you, Section 8, for sharing this. Just drop it by Merlord. That's how you know it's going to be good. Oh, yeah, this is pretty sweet. <laughs> That's too cool. So, I mean, it's a little bit physics-defying there, but... <laughs> so, I wonder, you know... <laughs> yeah, right, like when we implement Oblivion physics, where in Oblivion, something like this would immediately just... Or Skyrim or Fallout or anything else for that matter. Morrowind's got that stuck in the ether physics going on here. Um, <laughs> never mind that, though. Totally something OpenMW can do, you wouldn't think it can. Uh, really interesting. Well, uh, so let's see here. Uh, we have that. So floaters in a similar technique. Oh, to autofix floaters. You know, I had the same thought somewhat recently. Could we use ray casting to do uh, bounding boxes, one of the available types, on cell references? Oh, really? You don't say. That must be a pretty new thing, I would reckon. That's exactly what this thing does. 
Shoot, I've been needing something like that too. So another thing I had an idea for, I don't mind sharing with uh, you folks on the stream. You might note there are some mushrooms that emit lights, right? Luminous Rusula and the other ones in the Bitter Coast. When you harvest them with graphic herbalism, the light is still there and it's awkward. There used to be a add-on for old GH that would remove the lights. And I was thinking we could do this with Lua. And I started working on it and ray casting was totally janky. So I got annoyed and stopped working on it. It's raycast to the ground. Okay, so cell references. Let's see here. Core. Ooh, get bounding box. That is new. I swear. I just looked here. And it returns a box. Interesting. Raycast to the ground. Okay. Interesting. Have you played with this? Section 8. And this is new. This is probably pretty new. And if this is the case, we could autofix floaters. And we could do just drop it and open MW. I <laughs> just get a kick out of all this stuff. On one hand, I'm very excited to see that. <laughs> Same with, uh, for example, this makes more sense, right? But same with, for example, this. I'm very excited to see this, even though it defies so-called accurate physics simulations. In OpenMW Lua, not yet. Uh, okay. So it's worth exploring. And this is one of those things, right? Like, I wonder if this is like... So I was trying... Uh, let me just share with you folks what I was trying to do. Game. So I am a sliding shroom harvest science. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was, this is exactly what I was trying to do. What is happening? Emacs, you're killing me. Math shenanigans. Yeah, I figure, right, to get collisions and the angles and stuff. Right. Very little needed out of the API for something like this. Oh, geez. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. But this is my code, and you can see it just was... I, I gave up. I don't know if this is actually even working, but um, I was, like, trying to... So we have a global script here. Global script. Real simple. Just when a shroom is activated, meaning you picked it, we do this. We send the event to check the shroom lights and that's where the magic happens right in theory and so you activate the thing that'd be this and then i was trying to like look and feel around like when i activate the mushroom are you by other mushrooms if not we'll kill the light too right easy right but the ray casting was just so janky i couldn't make it work and then somebody on discord told me that it's from the base the like z base of the mesh and then i'm just thinking well how do we get like the head maybe this bounding box theme came out of that discussion actually and I just didn't get the memo center half size holy moly yeah hmm so this is cool um it's like an actual API for what we do here Lightning rods. No, 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 no. In the Dwemer lightning rods. Um, and big thanks to Ezzy. Going by Ezzy Tabby on Discord, who helped me out with the transform stuff. But it seems like, yeah, uh, the lightning rods from OAAB have a different, you know, default position than the vanilla ones. So you got to do a transform on various things. We're teleporting it like this. You know, perhaps this is a different, this is a better API for that. Um, 
scale and rotation because that's exactly what we needed to do here. So anyways, I mean, this is somewhat opaque right here and maybe it could be made less opaque with better code. But anyhow, cool, very good stuff. Um, so I take it that to mean that you're uh, working on a port then, section eight, right? You're gonna do the, is this going in the skunk works? I was kidding about the port thing, but it should go in the skunk works if it's even partially possible, not even if it's totally possible, we should write, you know, hey, just drop it. You know, this, this, and this is doable. This is not yet doable to achieve parity with, um, you know, with this one. But, uh, you know, as you said, most of the code is just math shenanigans. So, um, you know, frankly, that's natural character growth and decay, too. It's in the advanced section, I think, of the uh, API docs. You mean... No, no. Okay. Skunk works of your doc. Okay, cool. Love it. That's great. So yeah, this is great. Another great concept. Um, <laughs> you gotta love that shield partially buried in the ground there. Always very uh, classy. So yeah, this is great. It would be really cool if we could implement this. Uh, let me know how you feel about that, Section 8. We can go there. Nice. Very nice. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that there. Thank you for sharing that, sir. And yeah, this so this one um should be closed, honestly. I guess we might have missed this one, Ganto, but yeah. This one can definitely be closed. Uh and I will note in this one specifically, um, it's relatively long, but I'm kind of tempted to try it. Section 8 says, hey, um, you know, don't take, you know, if you got other stuff you're working on, don't, like, spread yourself thin or anything. But if you're hungry for some open MW Lua project, you know, I'm almost tempted to revisit the Mushroom Lights thing and try the Bounding Box API and see if that'll work better. But, um, anywho, we'll go ahead and update that one later. Very good. Actually, been having a good conversation with Simon um, on Discord, direct message conversation, and uh, kind of discussing the needs uh, for changes and things like that. Um, you know, where does it make sense to use kind of these packaging ethos? You know, so look forward to that once we finish this release, the 6.x release. You know, we can start thinking about things like that. So. Uh, no biggie, Gonzo. Yeah, I missed it too, obviously. There's, you know, maybe we should just take another pass and try to find those other clean ones because there shouldn't be any other issues for cleaning, but mm. got to get some open MW Lua under your belt. Yeah, man. Um, both yous or anybody who's like interested, you know, and that's ho hopefully that's the, what we'll achieve with the Skunk Works thing, right? We can, we can show what's possible and and you that doesn't necessarily like to port for example merlord's mod or whatever but people don't have to do that maybe they can just see like oh i can do that well maybe i can do this other thing that nobody other, ever thought of you know party mod is probably a little ambitious for the current state of the api section 8 says so taking a step back the party mod let's talk about this so i had an idea that i uh kind of tossed at section 8 sometime uh, a couple days ago let's just talk about skunk works and uh, the idea for the party mod, par, let's uh, party mod. So the idea behind this one is, we would basically turn the combat of Morrowind into Dragon Quest JRPG style, which means if you never played Dragon Quest, it's basically I go, you go, I go, you go. You select commands each time you go. Um, highly recommend checking out um, the English translation of Dragon Quest Three for Super Nintendo if you're wanting to jump into that kind of style. Um, it's very <laughs> grindy uh, genre, but suffice to say, I don't know, I think Morrowind could be kind of cool uh, with this kind of a gameplay um, mod. And so... <laughs> Uh, Smalio, must have slimes. Yeah, we got to add the slime from Dragon Quest. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. Section 8 says, I think the fact that we both had the exact same idea a couple of weeks means the stars have aligned and it must happen. 
Yes. And uh, so check it, though. Like, we're not just crazy here making up ideas that can't happen. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Open that menu. Get lab. Here we go. There is a merge request that is in the I'm ready to be merged, please review me phase that is really exciting. I talked about it previously on this stream. Let's see here. On drop player event. Ooh, interesting. I haven't looked at that. Let's not get distracted here, though. Mm. But this is the merge request. Yeah, open, never mind, plus attend me, plus party selection turn based. I mean, wow, that would be really like, it's Morrowind, but completely different gameplay, you know? And um, suddenly the dice roll combat makes a lot more sense to control the GUI from Lua. Updated five hours ago. So this is the MR that would make such a mod possible to put Dragon Quest style turn based combat into Morrowind, I think. We'll have to look at it more closely, but this, a big part of it is the ability to set actual pause. Like when you hit escape or when you open the inventory and the game pauses, or if you're talking to somebody, we can't do that from Lua yet. But I believe this would allow us to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Custom stats window, kind of like what I do in my mod, for example, or others do as well. Register window. Boom. Look at this. Oof. So nice. So um, I'm looking forward to this. I actually got thumbs thumbs up this one. This is probably my most anticipated feature right now that's not already in uh, 0 0.49, and it's going to also enable a controller GUI, something that we've all been after for a long time, which reminds me I got to hit up Zach about that because I know he was working on it. So anyway, um, this right here could enable the Dragon Quest mod, though. Pretty exciting. Um, and thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Section 8. And so, yeah, you know, here we are. We're just, like, brainstorming a bunch of stuff that we can not reasonably achieve in any reasonable amount of time. <laughs> but that's the purpose of the Skunk Works, right? Like, I want to see this happen. I can't do it myself, probably. Not until making Morrowind mods is my day job. Get the current mode. Add mode. Set mode. Set mode with nothing. Yeah. Uh, super looking forward to this one. Uh, okay, so this one and playing sounds from Lua. Uh, Section 8 says, Androp's got a bunch of interesting mentions of multiplayer. Well, since you said that, let's take a look, shall we? On drop player event. Lowering my desk. I'll be right back. There we go. All right. Now, what have we got here? D hard coded the interface. Okay, okay. At the time, it's rather difficult. It's the player if the item has. Interesting. Yeah, so implications of who's the player. Basically. Um, you know, obviously in single player Morrowind, there is no question of who's the player. It's the player. 
but in an engine that has a notion of multiplayer, there's multiple players. So something like on drop player event suddenly becomes a lot more complicated. And then I think what Peter here says is also valid. Um, Possibly, you know, a more general handler would be better, you know. And so this is where kind of one of the challenges of OpenMW Lua comes up here. Um, we're not simply just exposing moral and functionality. We're exposing functionality that can be applied to any game, theoretically. Specifically Morrowind, but also other things. Um, so, yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, we can't depend entirely on Morrowind semantics forever. We can implement them and people can mod them, though. And so that's what Erm's talking about here. Left for dehard-coded Lua interface, meaning there would be an interface like what we see here, and you can use or wrap it or hook into it or change it however you want, you know. Um, we're just not quite, so something like this, we're just not quite there for the various aspects. But I love seeing this, um, and it's, you know, not really a huge change. Plus 30, minus 3, so nice and clean. Uh, you know, props to the author. Erm's suggesting exactly what TES3MP does, says Section 8. Uh-huh, yeah. Erm, if you didn't know, has a hi we have a history with the project, a multiplayer project. Erm not only hacked on a lot of mods, scripts for the server, but also on the code base itself. So, uh, you know, he's pretty qualified, as are you, to comment on multiplayer-related concerns. And let's take a look here. Lua bindings for sound functions. Animation bindings. Ooh, I will resist clicking on that, but ooh, that's pretty good here. So where are we at on this one? Uh, a specific path. Should allow to specify a path outside of sound VFS path. Okay, good. I like that. I don't hate this idea, um, but I think like this would be an aux package probably based on how I see the API. If you're familiar, OpenMW Lua has like a underscore aux kind of packages. And I feel like there could just be like maybe not MW script aux, but some kind of aux package. Like these kinds of wrappers that are helpful could go in there. Ah. <sighs> And for context, just add Lua wrappers would be one approach to adding the ability to control sound from Lua. You know, just hook into NW script would be a quick and dirty way of doing it. Um, we don't really want to do the, you know, this is not what Kartanov is going for here. He's got like a real API, can even play loose files with no record. Did I think I did what I could here. Incompatible with multiplayer. Oof. Probably not. The say API. AI sound API. Interesting. Okay, so you know they're ironing out problems. And again, this is a OpenMW is a project that is a uh, intending to be multiplayer, as is evidenced by these discussions. So when we talk about play a sound with Lua, you know, sure you can do it one way that may work, but is it gonna? Is it going to age well? So it's tricky. These are all things to watch, though. I anticipate we'll see this one for sure merged. Doesn't look like there are any blocking issues here. The HUD elements are not included in this. And that's, you know, I think that's fine. Um, a lot of work. Cool. Well, yeah, props to everybody, though. Um, props to everybody who's working on that. Cool. So going back to our own issue tracker, though. We've gone way down the deep end here. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, we will eventually have a some kind of a Bane something. And I even, I even talked to Simon privately about uh, doing an Oblivion mod list, too, when the time comes. Simon said his favorite 
Elder Scrolls game is Oblivion, which I know almost nothing about, really. I only play with the unofficial patch and quick loot when I play, so that'll be really great to do in the future. Um, still want to do this, but I feel like with this sound potentially so close, um, not only could we do cool soundtrack mods for TR, but yeah, I mean, we could pull in like, uh, we could have a script for if you bought the, you know, the Skywind soundtrack. Use those files properly. Just plop them in there and we'll use them. Um, hey, hey, what do we got here? Racky Tacky Rampa 696969. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. And yeah, they say, is that Skyrim? Um, are you hearing the music? I have uh, Dwemer Ruins by Ridley A playing from the Tamriel Tamri Rebuilt original soundtrack at the moment. Uh, just kind of having it shuffle for this uh, for the stream. Three hours of good old Morrowind-inspired fan music. Nonetheless, though, yeah. Dynamic music. Imagine true dynamic music in Morrowind. We're almost there. Um, this one is basically there. Um, so you would need to have a plugin still to define records if you wanted to have you know controls over or pitch and looping and stuff like that loose files wouldn't have such controls if you didn't need them it wouldn't matter you can just plop them in there and have a loose script with no plugin but i'm looking forward to it i was playing last night um finishing up judging mods for the mod jam and i just and i had like a mud crab chasing me around and i remember thinking like i really don't want the battle music playing right now <laughs> you know like I don't need, like, war music playing for an angry crustacean. Unless he's wearing a monocle. I digress. Okay. So I think the only really um, major issue we have at the moment would be stuff like this, these floaters. Um, this one is going to be addressed... In the 6.x update, um, as I mentioned, we're going to have some removals noted. Where are we at now? Here we go. And here we'll start noting removals. And, uh, yeah, Rise of the Tribe of Morn, just not compatible. Um, and the, the uh, Merged Lands tool, let's see. Merged. Here we go. I think somebody mentioned this last time. Um Merged lands tool doesn't exactly fix this one. I think Gonzo reported trying it. So um doesn't quite do what we need to do. Um I haven't used it yet, but it seems like it's pretty configurable though. So I wonder if there isn't like some knob we can tweak to maybe help with it. But this is a you know, it's a bit over my head at the moment. Uh and I just want to note too, following the last time I think we mentioned this, um Benjamin Winger, author of Delta Plugin, we all know and love. Um, chiming in here about adding proper OpenMW support, and he's written a crate for um, yeah, actually, so Gonzo asked, did you hear back from Benjamin about merged land support? Yes, I did, and he basically said it would be complicated to add it into Delta plugin, but that to add the ability to support OpenMW would be pretty simple considering that Benjamin Winger has written a crate to do most of the work. So this is a library that you can plop into your Rust project that will allow you to interface with OpenMW config. Which is what they're lacking here, right? Like this thing just reads Morrowind.ini. It doesn't know. So it would need to read um, the OpenMW config to know where the data paths are and then also what the plugin names are. And, and again, that's all implemented here by Benjamin, really. So it, I'm not going to say it would be simple, but it's doable for sure, and a lot of the work is already done. So we'll see if this ever happens, though. Um, but apparently, a lot of OpenMW users are using this somehow. Uh, you're using it somehow, Gonzo. <laughs> um, I just uh, haven't myself, you know, taken the time to. I could probably apply the same methodology I use. Yeah, it took a lot of fiddling. <laughs> I could probably use the same methodology I use for MLocks. But, um, yeah, it would be nice to just have it read the config file. Um, 
Yeah, I guess on that note, before I jump into uh, the goodies and the coming soons, uh, so I wanted to mention earlier this week, somebody, uh, actually going back a couple weeks now, people have been reporting, actually we have an issue for it, uh, 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 friends and foes, NPC death. Yeah, it's basically the same as MLOCs, plus or minus some mods. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Gonzo. I appreciate that feedback. So uh, looking here, our friend Sophia has filed this issue, Friends and Foes NPC Death, but certainly they're not the only one who's experienced it. Uh, going back a couple of weeks, actually, a few people reported it. Um, and as it turns out, the technical details are, um, and I will update this. This is my comment from before we knew what the hell was going on. Excuse me. But the technical details are effectively that a dirty plugin with evil GMST contamination was breaking the way friends and foes has wizards teleport into the scene. So if you ever went into like a mages guild, you might see some wizards teleport in. Uh, let's go in there. And, um, you know, friends and foes adds NPCs all over the game and in a very immersive way, too. And so the mages and the mages skills will teleport in and out of the scene, and it's really cool. They do this by doing a uh, clever implementation trick with a conjuration creature. And it's the same trick that uh, the multiple mark and recall mods use. And uh, so, yeah, let's just get down here. Oh my god, I can't move. Um, in any case, what was happening was a dirty mod with the evil GMST contamination was changing those settings. The one type of thing that Delta Plugin does not auto-clean for us. Oh me, oh my, look at me run here. That's awkward. And so it was breaking the way the teleport worked. It was not working. It was killing the NPCs. And so in a nutshell, it was a dirty plugin with evil GMST contamination that did it. Let's get in close here. There we go. And yeah, so it wasn't clear to me at first, like, oh, why, you know, why was this happening? How can you make them die? I wasn't actually able to see it, but I actually never saw somebody teleporting in, clearly. Um... And I also didn't have the dirty speechcraft uh, pickpocketing plugin. I'm sorry, but it also turns out that okay, I didn't put the output here, but. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I broke it. Very, very dirty plugin. Very, 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 very dirty plugin, as you can see here. Just every, you know, 61 evil GMSTs from Blood Moon, Tribunal, the whole gamut. We got ambient lighting, water height changes, dupes. We got it all here. So evil. Yes, Gonzo. It's totally evil. Um,. But a lot of times it's hard to see the impact of that until you have somebody trying to do something clever, you know. Um, and so the multiple teleport mod was broken. Sophia reported on Discord that she was able to fix it by scrolling it down in the load order. And I thought, wait a minute. That's not right. It should work where it is. And that led me to find that Telvani cephalopod. Oh my good gravy, the lights. You don't... Uh, Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Section A is commenting on the lights in my scene. And it's a combination of things. It's Zesterer's Cloud Shader and Hamaris's Better Lights for All Shaders and MD's Dunmer Lantern Replacer and probably another one that I'm forgetting. Crying in 0 0.47. You multiplayer kids, I tell you. Okay. Um. Wow. So that is uh, the 
that is the issue with the NPCs dying. Oh, Gonzo says, I wonder how difficult it would be to get that off of a sine wave and make it more like a fire flicker. Yeah, I mean, in theory, we could do that with shaders, but uh, that's like a bit out of my wheelhouse. So, might be an idea to put out there, though, on Discord. <laughs> Section 8 says, I have a flamethrower and a chainsaw, and I will have shaders eventually. Well, <laughs> good luck. By flamethrower and a chainsaw, you mean a compiler and the ability to get whipped a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, anyways, let's... Uh, it's that time now. Let's go back to the list. I've been kind of... We didn't actually do any CFG generator refactoring, um, I regret to say, but I'll probably do a little bit of that in time. Uh, but for now, we're going to go here to the issue roundup. Um, and yeah, specifically, and I'm going to leave a comment on Herdrax's issue here, but Herdrax did some really great investigations about what we're going to be using, and he left me with a sense of what's the best setting to go with. And so, real quick here, we're going to get... I'm going to reduce my view distance just so I can maybe get a better FPS here. I'm going to do just four cells. And we're going to go in-game. And we're going to look at... So, the new... recommendation for uh, bodies and heads is going to include instead of plug in list Robert's bodies and the related tweaks and the beast bodies we're going to go with uh, this one which is an updated version of the very classic better bodies with beasts and uh, we're not going to click on those <laughs> images because there's some naked people there um so keep that in mind. Um, this mod has naked people. Not by default. You have to add it. But so if you're not into that kind of thing, it's separate. You know, just don't use it if you don't want it. So this would be the body replacer. Um, some nicely clothed people here we can look at, but give you an idea of sort of like what some of the males look like. You know, it's better bodies. We've seen it before, I think. It's pretty good. And then... Uh, we will actually keep these items on our list that we're already using, but they will be mostly overwritten by Danae's very excellent Wesley's Master Pack Prim and Proper. I'm about to go in game and take a look at this, and you know... I just want to say this is a great pack and props to Danae for doing a really great kind of curation of this. <sighs> Her notes here are spot on. You know, Wesley says are pretty, possibly too pretty. You don't have to use the replacer. We're going to use the replacer, but uh, <laughs> if we, we'll go to Balmora and you'll see, you know, our favorite uh, Nord woman walking around the square kind of. Uh, she has a, a new face, and it looks great, but it's also, you know, more pretty than we're used to, probably. And the current heads that we're using, actually, there are certain issues with them. Floating ha hair on some. I'm sure some of you have noticed that I have. Uh... Danae is queen. Yeah, much love to Danae. Section 8 says that. And yeah, I gotta agree. She's very nice uh, and helps keep the community going and provides awesome content, um, which I greatly appreciate. Right, let's make sure we're good to go here with... Uh, I don't need 4,000 speed necessarily. And that should be good. Okay. In we go. And so Danae's prim and proper actually leaves a lot of um, story-related NPCs out of the picture. 
Um, so you'll have like Fargoth, for example, with the vanilla face. And that's why we're keeping our Wesley's heads that we have now, as Herdrax has noted in the issue. And we're loading it before Danae's so we can keep those changes because we don't want vanilla Fargoth. Actually, we don't want that. So, all right. <sighs> Got to wait for the Lua thing to do its thing. If I'm not lazy today, there you go. If I'm not lazy today, I'll find out the commit that did that. Maybe we'll reach out to the author and let them know. So, okay, Galbadir. I believe probably one of the ones that is skipped by Danae's effort. Go down here. Rannis Ethris for sure is skipped by Danae's. Um, Quest-related NPCs and stuff, again, as I mentioned, skipped by Prim and Proper. However, quite a few NPCs are not. As indicated in the notes, you know, a couple th thousand plus, which is just mind-blowing. What a big game. All right, so bear with my potato here. Looks like my view distance change helped uh, maybe a little. Spin around here so she doesn't run away on me. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. She's got a bit of a different face now, you know, and it just looks like more like a real face. So it's not quite what I'm used to, but hey, you know, I like it. And if we go over here, you know, other fellas. I mean, it looks pretty good, I think, you know. Um, there we go. Let's travel, shall we? Oof, oof, come on. I find if I spin around, I get a little more frames. Letting everything kind of get warm. All right. And yeah, we can just... Oop. So I don't know if that is maybe a TR or an OAAB head. It doesn't quite look like a Wesley head there. It's not beautiful enough. I mean, look at this guy. This is what I'm talking about. This is a Wesley head. Look at those eyebrows, huh? And that beard. So, you know, a bit different than what we're used to. Very beautiful heads. Um, Danae's comment, again, isn't wrong about these things. You know, these guys, like, just look fantastic. But there's a lot of variety, too, you know, which is why this is good. Um, you may not see this face on every, you know, Dunmer, every other, or every third, you know, Dunmer NPC that's out there. Um, so, yeah, we're basically going to go with all the recommendations in Herdrak's issue, and I'll note that on the, the additions list. And I basically agree with all of his conclusions, too. Um, and I think the net package is going to be pretty good, which is a combination of what we have right now with Danae's work. Excuse me. Hey, all right. Nellos, I never knew. Yeah, Bards of Bardenfell. All right. I hadn't actually gotten into... Uh, Oh, bother. All right. I hadn't actually gotten into an inn to see this happen. I'm so glad we got this console window now. That's great. Nello Sonmar. Yeah, I suppose it's from Bardenfell because it's got the VD Bard script on it. VD for Von Django being the author. Cool. Let's turn the AI on. All right, hold up. We need some, we need audio. All right. Why do you 
Everybody's so talky. <laughs> Adrilasa now speaks too. I believe uh, Quest Voice Dialogue had an update recently adding quite a few more. Um, so that's cool. And yeah, you'll note just the fancy clothing on everybody. And this is the NOD, NPC. I forget what it stands for off the top of my head, but I mean, you're seeing it in action here. It just looks fantastic. Um, uh, and that's pretty cool. It, you know, this is the kind of, ooh, nice. I never noticed this here before, the cards and stuff. Very cool. You know, like in Skyrim, you walk into an inn and somebody's like wailing away. Okay, and it properly stops the music. The music has started. Well, we're doing an impromptu review of Bards of Bardenfell. Here we go, guys. Let me come in here. Fade down the music, fade in the bard music. That's cool, really cool implementation. It seems to work really well. Obviously, uh, we're playing some 10 seconds of silence there. That's cool, nice little trick. Um, nice, well there you go. And this one obviously is getting added to the list, so. We kind of did a little two for one there. Just looking at uh, various NPC heads and bodies with the new configuration. Um, hmm, I wonder where else should I go? Let's, I know. Let's take a look at uh, what's on that guy's shoulder. Section eight, you're too late. I'm already teleporting out of there. I don't know. I think it's some kind of poultron, though. Yeah, it looks kind of spacey. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll go back there and look. <laughs> All right, let's go back there and look, actually. Let's go back to Pelagia. Good call out. We'll have to kill him and take it, probably. Okay. You there. Yeah, it does look like a stormtrooper, doesn't it? Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Alright, uh, no more AI for now. And this would be a Draz, House Draz, Hunter Wright Pauldron. I'm taking it. I want to look like a stormtrooper. How about that? <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's some interesting design, nonetheless. And my feet are glowing too. Would you look at that? I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. I want to see Nibani Maeza and the Gulakan. Of the whoa, 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 there we go. All right, don't try this at home, or do actually, never mind that. Um, these people don't care if I murdered some Imperials, right? Yeah, all right. Oh, <laughs> they know though, they know. Uh, yeah, Gonzo Games, with a very interesting comment here. Let me just turn down my music. Holy moly. Uh, he says, I feel like the House Drez was one of those things that got relegated to the mainland because of the scope. Poor House Drez. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Uh, this is such a big idea, you know. <laughs> uh, Section 8 says, dude, I can't stop losing it at the graphics. What do you mean? You never seen Total Overhaul, my man? This is what we do over here. We make Morrowind hopefully tastefully beautiful is what we're going for, you know. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, we got to talk more offline, friend. We got to get you set up, all right? Okay, so I can't remember if this is what she looks like with our head pack and this is what's coming from the, the one that we have now. But, yeah, I mean, she looks good. Neat little gem on her head there, you know. Um... Wow, so section eight, you haven't, you haven't really played the game totally decked out then, huh? With uh, with modern flares and stuff. Yeah, check these guys out. These are ported from a Skyrim mod that adds Morrowind creatures. Uh, fourth unknown. 
really, really help with the uh, with the aesthetics and the visual. Hey, you, what do you look like? See, just such variety with everybody. Those are Guar, my friend. Yes. <laughs> Section A asks, those are period, period, period Guar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Check it out. Check it out. We're gonna go look at this guy over here. You know these guys. Modded Kagudi right here. I don't think this is fourth unknown. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, wow. Well, so this really makes me wish I wasn't on a potato because I would give you a proper tour. Um, and that does make me think that we are kind of due for another total overhaul tour video to go along with 6.x. I mean, we've got a lot, so much good stuff. <laughs> Be retrieving jaw from floor. My friend. Um, and yeah, keep in mind, this is an integrated Intel graphics card. My opinion, 15 frames per second, it has no business running this well. And here we are. Now, keep in mind, this is a reduced draw distance. I play with 20 cells view distance on my actual gaming rig. You can see beyond Ghost Fence with that. This is still really atmospheric, though. You know, the Ashlands should be kind of uh, foggy. Ooh, Gonzo says, let me know if you need any help with that capturing footage or anything. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you know, making videos like that is really fun. Rendering it out takes forever and then what inevitably happens is you'll find like at the very end like two seconds that suck and you got to redo it and then you're looking at like four hours of rendering even on a even on a decent this is a 12th gen intel processor fast even on something like that though you know it just invariably takes a lot of time but i appreciate that i'll let you know we'll talk about it i'll probably make an issue and uh in the past i've always just like storyboarded those myself but in this time around i would like to actually have a gitlab issue describing what we're going for you know and we'll plan it together would be a lot of fun. I'm not much for video production. I like it, actually, but I'm not going to claim to be, you know, Steven Spielberg quality of uh, depictions here. Just random person that probably wants to kill me if AI was on. And just see the variety of all the heads. I mean, this is going to be another, like, I feel like you could say anything in our coming update is just a huge improvement that's going to change everything. But this, Danae's excellent mod here is like... I thought we were good with the Wesley's heads that we had, but we were totally not good. Um, totally not good. I mean, where else can I go to blow away Section 8? Let's go to the West Gash. Let's go to Nisus. And hopefully it's not too potato-y over here, but I feel like this is another beautiful region. Um, Bitter Coast, totally beautiful and and... The name of the monitor escapes me, but they've been doing the landscape, little landscape mods that are just stunning. You know, Path to Pelagia. Stunning. Just, I love it. Um, here we go. And yeah, I feel like 13 frames per second better than my Intel potato has any business pulling off. Gif Telvani thinks, oh, okay, I got you. I got you, friend. No problem. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? And you're going to get a little sample of some Marathon goodies here, too. Actually, uh, our friend Details Devil has a Sagerth Mora mod in the, in the mod jam. Not Marathon, summer mod jam. And uh, I've got it in the loadout here. We'll take a look at it. Ooh, I am <laughs> stuck. Help! All right. So, yeah, welcome to Sadrith Mora. Pay no attention to the purple bellows there. I got to fix that. But you will actually do look at them. You'll note that they're moving and they have the sound effect too. Um, yeah, stuck at COC as Todd intended. <laughs> Even more of those little landscapes now. Wow, sweet. Okay, I got to take a look. And actually, uh, again, our friend Detail Devil, who we're about to look at their work, has a few other Sagerth Moral works that I hadn't seen before that I'll be checking out later on today. I mean, all BCUM compatible. Probably one of my favorite cities in the game, if I'm not lying, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, just so interesting textures on the bellows. Yeah, I goofed something. I don't know. I thought I fixed it. And here we are. They're broken again. So just pay no attention to that. Um, ooh. Really, it's a very busy city. But what you'll note here is, and 
we've got this little house pod right here that's kind of like elevated. It's from Detail Devils Mod. And I'll pull that up in a moment. But also this guitar player here. I hope you can hear it. Let me get closer. Let me get up there. All right. As Todd intended, I shall fly. So pretty cool, right? We got uh, two NPCs added by this one. Let me see here. Uh, of melody and moonlight. Of melodies and moonlight by Details Devil. From uh, and there were 21 total mods in the mod jams. This is just one of them. A uh, bard and a groupie, yeah, for sure. Um, melodies and moonlight by Detail Devil. Um, and yeah, adds two NPCs, two house pods. One being this guitar player fella here. And the other being a painter who only likes to come out at night. Really, though, like when you got a skyscape like we got, really, you know, let's just set game hour to, you know, you got MDs. Of course, it's cloudy and overcast, but, you know, the lights, the stars, I mean, who wouldn't come out at night to paint, right? So look forward, anyways, to seeing this one on the lists. But I feel like the Telvani... Oh, wait! I can't believe I... <laughs> Maybe uh, you folks have already seen this. Maybe you've played the latest update of Glow in the Dark. Maybe you haven't. You're in for a treat if you haven't seen this yet. Um, and I hope my potato doesn't really ruin it. Where are we going here? I can't see because the sun's in my eyes. Suddenly decided to come out. Yeah, look at this. Hey, Sophia Sunshine, thank you for joining the stream in the chat. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, she says, anybody ever try Telvani Magister Robes mod? And if it's compatible with the Telvani mod, common Telvani mods, it looks pretty cool. I have not. Um, let's talk more about that, though. Maybe open an issue on GitLab if you feel like it. Sophia, please do, and we'll take a look at it. We'll investigate compatibility. But look at this, huh? Telvani Council House glowing. Uh, section 8, we use Tilvani Magister Roads on TSI. It's great. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, th I want to say I've seen that one. Haven't actually tried it. So, again, welcome, Sophia. And, yeah, thank you for that great question. We'll look into that one. Yeah, so, here you're seeing a glow-in-the-dark, glowing council house globe. But, wait, there's more. We switch it to daytime and go inside. supposed to be glowing in here too maybe it kind of is or we have a con I think we have a conflict here it's uh some of the best clothing I've ever seen in Morrowind section a and Sophia both say wow okay that's great feedback I love that um I gotta see this <laughs> drop a link here or on discord please or file an issue on GitLab I definitely gotta see this okay well we have a bit of a conflict here too. We got to file an issue for this, Gonzo, maybe. Um, I'm going to put in iHeart Vanilla to show you all this because it's so cool. But it, uh, during the day, it lights up on the inside, too, and we're missing out. Hold up. We got to go in there. Thank you, Section 8. We'll pull that up in just a moment. Um... Here we go. Pulling up the cell. Thank you so much, Gonzo. Appreciate it. Uh, that's a thing that we need. Probably a simple incompatibility. We'll get to the bottom of it. We've been fixing those a lot lately, huh? All right. Slightly less potato -y here with the I Heart Vanilla, but I have normal maps and other goodies on here. Matt and normal maps. And somebody said on Discord recently, the vanilla textures, I think it was Mr. Smelly's. I saw him mention how the vanilla textures have a charm to them, and they really do. They for sure do. I love beautifying the game, don't get me wrong. And I mean not met even, just the vanilla blurry textures have a certain charm to them. So anyway, brace yourself. Boom, yeah. See, this is what we should be having. 
and so if I say set game hour to, and if I spell it correctly, set game hour to, you know, 10 p.m., not lit. 10 a.m., lit. So yeah, <laughs> Gonzo says, I have what you have. Yeah, so something's borked. We're going to have to figure that out. Um, no problemo. Yeah, on total overhaul setup. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, really cool, uh, totally beautiful from the outside and pretty cool on the inside too to have this light. Let's go outside and, and take a look at what the uh, I Heart Vanilla view of it is. Um, it's not quite as beautiful, but still looking really great. All right. Yeah, just look at that. Woo. I mean, it's pretty much just as beautiful in my opinion. So we got a couple of things at play here. You got the glow in the dark globe that's glowing. You've got the lanterns, which I believe are by MD. You have, uh, which utilize techniques by Hamaris in uh, better shaders, better lights for all shaders. And um, you got Met. You got normal maps. You know, and this is just I, just iHeart Vanilla. This is the this is the smallest mod list on the website, even with vanilla textures. But you can see the normal maps doing their thing down there, right? Just, just to the right of that lantern on the right, um, providing some depth, you know, to s some basic textures. So anyways, yeah, glow in the dark providing this really neat effect here. Whew. All right. So yeah, um, we'll get to the bottom of that for total overhaul. We need that. And so, yeah, suffice to say, all of that exploration, we went all the way there and back because we were looking at Master Head Pack Prim and Proper and, uh, you know, unquestionably getting added. And again, big thanks to Herdrax, all this research, and I will respond in line to comment, but I basically agree with all of his findings. We will replace Pluginless Robert's bodies. These will remain and be overwritten by Danae's and NPC Outfit Diversity will take it home. Hey, Santa, my man, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for hopping in, dude. Hello. You know, we're just doing Morrowind again. All right. Um, I like that. So I like that a lot. If I didn't say it before. All right. So... Hmm. So we've got the new mods heading. We got new categories heading. I think at the bottom I'm going to put removed stuff. I'm trying to remember what's a heading in Markdown. I think it's a Octothorpe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Remove stuff. Um, we do say, for example, re replaces, um, but it might be. I think it's good to have a section specifying the remove stuff, one by one. So first and foremost, Roberts. Oh my god, I have too many tabs open. <laughs> Color tweaks, we'll put the link there, just for posterity. Maybe we'll use this link. Also, I think that's another one that has nudies. So many naughty mods. plug in -less Robert's bodies. I think pluginless aspect used to matter more. You know, uh, yeah, trying to avoid the nudies. Yeah, I mean, you know, not being puritanical or anything. I just don't want to put it on the stream, you know. Little off topic here. This is not the House of Earthly Delights, at least not today. Oh, on that note, though, hey. On that note, <laughs> House of Earthly Delights got me thinking about Saran and um, one of the Mod Jam mods that we're going to be adding, Hanging Gardens in Saran. And um, I actually had a point to um, 
go in game and check it out and I never did. Why don't we do that right now? All right. Remove stuff. Cool. And for those of you following along at home, you have some kind of reference uh, high level of what we're removing. <laughs> this is getting big enough to almost require a table of contents. I'll hold off on that for now. GitLab should auto-generate one. Maybe we'll file an issue on their issue tracker. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just had a brain fart. Oh, yeah, we're going to go and... I just completely had a brain fart. Gonzo, somebody help me. <laughs> What's the thing I'm going to look at? For now, I'm just going to look at my diff. Saran, all right, of course. Thank you. Hanging Gardens, that's right. Here we go. All right. See if I spelled it right. So actually, when I was, uh, this was one of the mods from the Mod Jam. And Asmalio was helping me kind of document and review mods. And uh, we both really loved this one a lot. So um, MW Gek, I think. No, that's not it. Okay. All right. We'll just do Saran. Thank you, Gonzo. Appreciate that. Created the issue. Bear on the details. We'll fill it in as we figure it out. I don't actually have a clue. Um, but So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is we'll go in there. We'll look at it. Click on it. ORI. We'll note the meshes. And then we'll have to look at the VFF and uh, the VFS. And we could even maybe use Delta Plug and Query if we knew. Hmm. I don't know if Delta Plug and Query can look at meshes. If it doesn't, I'll request that from Benjamin. But anyways, we could use Query. Um. Yes, copious notes, Smalio. Thank you. Uh, for the mod jam. All right. Stuck as Todd intended, I think. Here, kind of. Oh no, 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 no. We're stuck as the Lua Todd intended. Uh, yeah. Section eight. If you've never, by the way, since you're not like exposed to graphic overhauls of Morrowind as much, if you've never seen the white Saran mod, here you go. Here you go. And I can already see the flowers from here. Please let me move. Wait for it. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm stuck in a rock. Hold up. All right, here we go. Just strolling through Saran. Third person is a lot better when you're not at a potato frame rate. And you can see already, we got little ferns up here. I'm not going to get too close to those because it's dark. Just flowers everywhere. And I love these dangling mushrooms right here. Super nice. Um, the author took the time to make a special BCOM version. I'm just walking on that slow. Don't even worry about it. But yeah, just look at any place where you could tastefully put flowers and foliage, they have done. Just mushrooms, flowers. Yeah, yeah. Somalia was a huge fan of this one. Um, probably her pick for the winner. And it, you know, it fit with the verticality theme um, pretty well. I mean, we're high and low here. We got flowers, you know. Um, ferns and yeah so just utterly beautiful everywhere and I don't feel like we're at spam levels here I feel like this is all tasteful makes Saran look a lot nicer Gonzo says yeah extremely tasteful it's busy but it's tasteful I need a sip here Hey, Altario, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. 
And uh, they say, I wish Saran wasn't so bereft of quests. Well, we can change that. And I think people are starting to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Section 8. This is the white Saran. If you've never been exposed, my friend. Get with the program already. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, uh, Altariel. I'm sure maybe you've seen MD's Temple Master quest. But, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to trying that one because, you know, gives some action to the properly, proper action to the properly beautiful town here. Um, but, yeah, that is an interesting point. We don't have a lot of quests really in here. The game, the base game itself doesn't take you here a lot. You know, you could never stroll through Sarand if you're just doing the main quest. You never end up going here. I don't know. Well, yeah, no, you don't. Ooh, look at all these flowers, though. Yeah, Hanging Gardens of Saran. So thank you so much for M.W. Gek, I believe, who is the author of this. Let's see. Hanging Gardens of Saran. Hurry up. And I just closed the Twitch chat. So let me open that back up. <laughs> I fat-fingered Control-Q. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, have you look at the have you look at the game while I get the heck back in here? I goofed, people. Just getting logged back into Twitch here. Lovely two-factor authentication that protects me from the bad people. Okay, here I come. <laughs> I saw you saying something, Altario. Sorry about that. Close the game so the website can lo load faster. Hey, Detail Devil. Wow, welcome. Hey, I'm so glad that you uh, hopped in. Um, you hopped in right as I borked my Twitch chat. <laughs> so let me just get back in there. I'm so glad you're here. And yeah, we love your work, uh, friend. So I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, stream manager. There we go. All right. Thank you, Twitch, for all the pop-ups. Okay, Altariel says, I did see Temple Master. Haven't played it yet. We'll definitely try it on a 6.x. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to that one. I sometimes like to do Temple um, playthroughs. You know, there's some good quests there, some really good loot. Um, and certainly Temple Master, even if you don't normally play as Temple, that's like a reason to definitely want to try it. So, uh, yeah, and again, Detail Devil, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here. And, uh, you know, again, we really enjoyed the uh, of Melodies and Moonlight mod. And the guitar player was just a super nice touch. As a guitar player myself, you can see my orange right here. I loved the touch. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, nice. Altariel says, Tamriel Rebel has some great temple quests, soon to have more. Awesome. I mean, to be honest with you, um, I haven't done a Tamriel Rebel run since like 28. It's been a long time, 2018 probably. I haven't even gone out there. So I have only flown through and seen like the new work in the latest release, which is great. Looks outstanding. Um, definitely looking forward to trying a lot of that. Um, and certainly with OpenMW Lua, we'll be able to do some nice... Um, compatible works that can affect Tamar we built. Add quests, balance it out, whatever. Um, yeah, great. So, okay. Let's go back here then. Uh, we'll go ahead and add this one since we looked at it. And we'll, uh, of, we'll go ahead and add this one too. 
and Dothran Temple quest line is in my top five from the mod Eltario says from Tamari we built. Wow, okay, good tip there. And Dothran, that's like one of the relatively newer regions too. So uh, those TR Dwemer Ruin exteriors, Gonzo says, yeah, right, exactly. That's why I love the lightning rod stuff and I really can't wait to see that in there. All right, let's go up here. I'm going to put this in the cities section. And yeah, thank you again to MW Gak for really beautiful work on this one. And it was an absolute pleasure to be a part of the Mod Jam and to judge all this lovely work. And then here, in honor of our friend, uh, Zydrox or Detail Devil. Thank you as well so much for your work here. And this was an interesting mod jam because there was only 48 hours. And so it's great to see, you know, what came out in such a short time. And, uh, and we got a nice little quest in this one, too. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and also, <clears throat> thanks to both of you, MW Gek and Detail Devil, for considering, you know, hey, people are playing with BCOM. As a content creator myself, I understand, you know, like being compatible is tricky. Maintaining multiple copies of things, very tricky. So it's really cool that you've got, you know, you had some room to work with there, some empty spots, but you designed it in a way where it works with or without perfectly. So well done. I really, I really like that. Cool. Okay. So moving on then. Uh, Gonzo had mentioned we got a couple more little landscape pieces coming out. So that'll be on my agenda later on. More Sadrith Moral Works by Detail Devil. Also on my agenda later on. Um, rainy day today, so I'm stuck inside. Bummer. Hey. Okay. All right. We got a uh, sour spacing. This seems like a spam comment, honestly. No offense. Uh, Gonzo, you and me gotta worry work out sometime how to like do moderation and stuff on the chats. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I don't know how to get rid of this. Uh, but yeah, don't go to the domain that they said there. <sighs> well, I guess I'm getting spam. That's kind of <laughs> sweet, Gonzo. I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll talk more about it after this stream. But well, cool. I got my first spammer. I think that's the first at least. <laughs> Uh, okay, that distracted me. All right, so let's... Uh... <laughs> you made it when bots start advertising. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> they're trying to apparently have a viewership that they want to reach. No problem there. Uh, okay, so I think we can... We got these two put in there. OAAB Market is another one that... Uh... I think our friend Romulus from Discord, I think, told me about that one. It was a mod jam mod from last year. Let's pull that one up. And we can put this in here as well. Let's see. OAB Market. Yeah, this is the one. This I liked this one, too. I didn't get too much of a chance to look at it too close. I was so busy judging mods all week, which is a great problem to have, of course. I didn't get a lot of time for anything else. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we did, maybe you noticed when I was flying around before, um, these lights that are in there, yeah, I just love all this stuff, very cluttery, nice, tasteful clutter, um, who's this from, Kalinter, yeah, excellent work, I just love this, okay, okay, Gonzo here with a, mod Gonzo Games, you're modded friend. <laughs> cool. Uh, Tetris Magistus, welcome. I'm so glad you joined us today. Uh, thank you for being in the chat and joining the stream. It says PTSD from setting up the one day modernization unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to put OAB Market on there as well. And that's going to go under the cities section. We're just really pumping up Sadrith Mora a lot. 
not so much that we're, you know, going to kill the performance. We got to be conscious about that. Yes. Thank you, Gonzo. The bot has been banned and the message deleted. Yay. Thank you very kindly. Now we can get back to the business at hand. All right. I have way too many tabs open. Let's close some of them. Excuse me. We're getting down to the final stretch here. Okay, and what else do we got here? Four cities here. Governor's Manor Redone, I believe we added on a previous stream. Mines and Cambridge, I believe we got on here. Let's save this before GitLab eats my form. Uh, Mines and Cambridge is on there. Okay, Section 8. Cheers. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure as always. We'll talk more. Skunk out, yeah. Do the Lua Skunk Works. We're going to get it going. We're inspired by our friends who make MWSE mods to make cool stuff for OpenMW. All right. Uh, yeah, let's look at another really nice one here. We got Howia Egg Mine. Do I have this on here? Howia? Yeah, we do. Okay. Haran Ancestral Tomb Overhaul. Um, we're going to do a few of the mods from the Summer Mod Jam. And this one, not going to lie, it's a tomb I didn't even like know where it was. It's just inconsequential. You could overlook it. And uh, our friend Seeloff here has really done a, a great thing. Done there, if you've seen New Illinibi or any of their other works, you know what you're in for. Some of the most exquisite clutter and uh, caver cavernous interiors you can expect. And a few surprises. And... Uh, yeah, Gonzo Games. Seeloff is a real true inspiration. Absolutely. And I'm not going to spoil this one, but I will just say you want to get to the end. You're going to want to get to the end. And that's all I'm going to say. So, of course, we got to put this one on here. An otherwise relatively untouched tomb now made gorgeous. And thank you, Seeloff. I really appreciate it. So let's find the cave section we got here. Some are caves, dungeons. Just astonishing how uh, huge this section is. Oh, and another thing that we uh, we worked out over the week. I see Mamea awakened up there. And again, again, our friend Romulus was kind enough to mention in Discord that there were some bugs with it. And it turns out that there's a script in the mod in Mamea Awakened, where when some Ash Ghouls will spawn, the script does something that seems pretty harmless, right? Just rotates them 90 degrees. That rotation alone is enough to cause physics funkiness in OpenMW because OpenMW's physics are just completely different from, you know, Morrowind.exe. It's just the way it's going to be. OpenMW's got to have physics like what you see in Skyrim, Oblivion, Fallout, all that stuff. Um, we're using bullet physics. We are not emulating Morrowind.exe physics for better or for worse. That means things like Abbott's riders are a little borked and require special massaging. But also, something as seemingly innocuous as rotating the ghouls 90 degrees causes them to glitch out and go through the wall, and you can never get out of the area, really, without TCLing yourself. So, Herdrax... Divinely inspired, uh, tr chase down that script, disable it, and found that it works fine without it. So maybe this will be a total overhaul patch. I'm not really sure how we're going to distribute it, but we got a fix for you folks. Um, and the puzzle filled mod will be happily added into our collection. So uh, needs a script edit to remove ghoul rotation. 
um, you know, I was helping Herdrex look into that, and I looked at that rotation, and I thought, that's nothing. That's not the problem, right? And then Herdrex pointed at it again, and I suggested to disable that. Sure enough. Sure enough, that's what fixed it. So, as Todd intended. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Moving on. Kind of all over the place here. I... <laughs> Blade Meister. Okay, so we have gotten down to companions here. I see Blade Meister, yeah. Maybe we didn't get to Daedric. No? Okay. Yeah, we actually looked at this one previously, which was another uh, Mod Jam mod. Eltariel says, quick question. Have you considered adding MDMD to the list, or would that be too incompatible? I'll be honest with you. I'm not familiar with the mod by that name. Please drop a link, and I will absolutely con uh, consider it. Um, thankfully, we have some new tools for compatibility. Thank you for the link. We have some new tools for compatibility checking at our, disposable, at our disposal. I can talk, I swear. Including the query command from Delta Plugin, which makes finding conflicts a lot easier. Um, more deadly Morrowind denizens. Oh, I've totally heard of this one. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Detail Devil, too, with a suggestion here. Uh, Marbled Zafrobel Bay by Zircon with his texture is a great, with their texture, is a great landscape mod overhauling Menhirs, Islands, and improves seafaring by adding little blue magical lights. Uh, I assume from OAAB data. Compliments Tilvani Sea Beacons extremely well. Wow. You got to hit me with links for both of those, friend. Uh, please. Um we got to check them out and get them added. That sounds beautiful and like a lovely addition for that region. So anyway, though, um, any you know, uh, giving unique spells and I mean, this sounds awesome. <laughs> of course, anything that anything that makes this many changes, there's bound to be potential concerns, right? There was a Morrowind randomizer. Somebody linked to me by Mort and I think um, G7 from a few years ago, which I'm going to try to add, but it's like with all the cave changes from mines and caverns and other things, like I really want, I would be surprised if there wasn't at least one thing that was misplaced, you know? Um, and N Nerevarines hate him. <laughs> this is great. This Nord boss went from level one simple. I love, I love this kind of stuff. This is great. Um, well, thank you, Eltario. I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, it's going on the, we need to see if it should go on the list list. <laughs> so I appreciate the link and yeah, detail devil. We're definitely going to, we're running a little bit out of time here. Um, but make sure, uh, you get me the link to those that you mentioned, please detail devil on discord, uh, shoot me a private message on discord and, uh, we'll check them out. We'll add them into the queue because, uh, sounds like it would fit beautifully. And this one as well. I feel like it should have more posts. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I am all about stuff like this. But yeah. Uh, I guess we'll have to find out, you know. Um, I'm planning on doing uh, whoop, at least one not totally comprehensive playthrough before we launch 6.x. I want to make sure everything's good, right? Um, and certainly, like, I think that's the only way we're going to find out if this fits in there is to just play with it. Um, you know, we can do research ahead of time. We can look and see what records conflict and stuff like that. And maybe we can find a lot of those ahead of time. And maybe some stuff is just going to bite us in the face while we're playing. Very, very good link. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, well, cool. Let's head back to the, yeah, so we definitely did that. And, uh, you know, we didn't really make any changes to the website. I'm going to count that checked. Um, we went on a couple of tangents here talking about various nice things. Um, this thing here is a note for myself. Um, as it turns out, if you're using Windows and you try to download the website source code, you're going to have a bad time, even if you use the Docker instructions. Um, and it's because of everybody's favorite topic of line endings. 
if you didn't know, Windows has a different kind of way of saying this is the end of the line than uh, basically every other operating system out there. And so suffice to say, we got to do this in the code base. So I'm going to try this. Um, and hopefully we can have more people on Windows helping out with the code and doing things locally, um, running the website and whatnot. So yeah, put this note here for myself because at my day job, I use Windows and uh, you know we work in, in Unix environments. And so we had, to, we had to solve this problem there. <laughs> and I thought, hey, that's for us too. So all right, well, it's that time again. And I want to thank everybody for joining me. Have a lovely day. And happy modding, and I will catch you tomorrow. Cheers.